Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great honor to be with you in this, with this privileged uh, presentations. And uh, in this presentation, I will navigate our boat to unsettled waters. And this is not the water of axons, but the water of astrocytes. And I will have a very simple question, which we addressed in our study, is actually whether if you look at the population, which is not playing American football, not boxing too much, whether you see anything reminiscent of described as CT. But first, we have to provide, of course, the definitions. And I will provide the current definition of CT, the current definition of astrocytic pathology in aging, and then I can talk about the study. So currently, CT is a neuropathologic term which is thought to occur as a consequence of repeat, repetitive mild traumatic brain injury. And currently, the definition is that the abnormal tau accumulates in neurons and astrocytes. And a further important sentence or part of this sentence is that this happens mostly in the depths of the sulci, or at least it is prominent there. Anne McKee and her group also suggest that there might be a sequential involvement of anatomical regions. And although this awaits widespread application in the practice, but at least this suggests that there might be four stages. And the first stage seems to start in cortical areas, like lobar areas, like parietal, temporal, or frontal lobe and in particular in the depth of the sulci, and then proceeds and makes a severe pathology. Now let me define uh, aging-related tau astrogliopathy. This is a term which is recommended to use in uh, astrocytic tau pathology, which cannot be otherwise classified. Because, you know, we see astrocytic tau pathology in many disorders like progressive supranuclear palsy or corticobasal degeneration. But there are astrocytes in the aging brain which do not fit into these morphological boxes. And we called for a consensus to define these, and we call this aging-related tau astrogliopathy. And these are how the astrocytes look like in the microscope in primary taupatis, like in progressive supranuclear palsy or the astrocytic plaque in corticobasal. And these two morphologies are what we see in aging brain. And one is called zone-shaped astrocytes, and the other one is granular fuzzy astrocytes. I hope you agree with the descriptive term. So where do we see these type of morphologies? You can see it in the supial area, in the subependymal area, in the perivascular, in the wide matter, but also in the gray matter. Obviously, these associate our thoughts to like blood-brain barrier. Also, in the wide matter, they accumulate close to vessels. And this, in a study, what we performed with Philadelphia, the University of Pennsylvania with John Trojanovsky and group, I went through like 700 cases, all kinds of diseases. And these are the locations where we documented these type of astrocytes. Like the green should be white matter, so this is not yellow, but the green is the white matter, the blue is the gray matter, the red is the supial, and the yellow is the subependymal. Just for your visual satisfaction, this is how CT looks like in the hemispheric. So it seems that a pretty much overlap between the location of CT pathology and the location of ARTAG, what we see in a mixed cohort of all kinds of diseases. And indeed, ARTAG is also mentioned in the single published uh, diagnostic criteria for CT pathology, but they mention it as a non-diagnostic and a non-supportive feature. So now, now let me talk about the present uh, study. So the aim is very simple, to investigate whether we can find CT pathology in an unselected community population. So just imagine a 
district in Vienna and persons above 75 were examined irrespective whether they had dementia or no dementia or anything. And our aim was also to provide a kind of a reference data of tau pathologies in the depth of the Sulzi. So in future studies, this can be used as a kind of a reference. We defined in this study CT pathology as concomitant presence of neuronal astrocytic pathology in the depth of the Sulzi, so concomitant presence. And also we made notes whether we see cases where we see greater density of neurofibrillary tangles, astrocytes in the cerebral sulci more than in, in the gyri. So the study included 310 individuals above 76 years of age and about 80, 181 was uh, women. And based on the sequential distribution proposed by Anne McKee, we screened the frontal and parietal and temporal cortices and we used an antibody which detects only the pathological form and early uh, disease associated modification. So this is how it looks like. So this means that people who are above 75 walking in the street in a district in Vienna have 1.3% of them have neurofibrillary tangles only in the depth of the Sulzi. And above the same amount have only in astrocytes, in only in the depth of the Sulzi. And very few of them have uh, gray matter ARTAG, which means astrocytes on, in the gray matter. As you see, neurofibrillary tangles anywhere in the cortices is much higher. And this is how it looks like under the microscope. So these are the supial astrocytes, these are the gray matter astrocytes, and these are the white matter and perivascular astrocytes. So actually, ARTAG was pretty frequent. So from the 310 individuals, we found like around 60, 70 cases. And the ARTAG was predominated by the gray matter form, followed by the uh, Supial and other. So this is clear. And then we made a kind of a mapping how this looks like in, the pop in this population. So in 48 cases, we found only single variables in either in the frontal, parietal, or temporal. And those with red asterisk are included in a CT criteria. And there was only one individual who presented with more than one of these city-like features. This individual was an 85-year-old female without a history of traumatic brain injury. This is a supial depth of the Sulzi astrocytes. There are some tangles in the depth of the Sulzi. However, we did not call this CT because it did, if we are very strict, it did not fulfill the criteria because the criteria would be that you see it in a perivascular distribution in the depth of the Sulzi, neuronal and astrocytes together. So it did not fulfill if we are strict. But this individual had all kinds of other mild degree of pathology. So the conclusion of this study was that <clears throat> if we use this criteria currently defined very, very strictly, we, will, we did not find any case which fulfills this. However, we found a lot of astrocytic tau pathology, even in the depth of the Sulzi. So ARTAG alone might not be indicative of CTE, but we also raised the problem or the issue or maybe <laughs> that um, we don't know exactly how to interpret these astrocytic tau pathologies. So we don't know whether mild concussions, what we, concussions, what we go through during our life might accumulate in just a pure uh, astrocytic response because these are in the places where blood brain barrier is um, important. So this needs to be uh, further studies. And exactly for this re reason, we thought to throw in the water a concept called components of CT. And this means that 
we should maybe dissect the morphological features, what we see in a CT brain, and document them unbiased in a lot of cases, like separately depth of the sulci, astrocytes, perivascular, and so on, neuronal, and so on. And then return back and see whether we can cluster any cases which have a well-documented history of brain trauma or not. And even in a brain with a CT, to look for anatomical regions which have only one of these components and see whether we can find or define a development uh, of the, uh, this uh, disease process. For this, we also need a very harmonized and standardized clinical collection, like longitudinal studies, because I think that the most difficult and retrospectively this uh, Vienna cohort, the one major limitation is when the individual has entered the study, there was a questionnaire in 2001, which asked whether you had traumatic brain injury or not, and they answered, but this usually means that one car accident or I don't know what, so obviously you, we did not, or that, that study did not ask the repetitive mild brain trauma, so I cannot address this. And this study was performed, of course, as usual, with uh, multi-power, and one of uh, the authors, who is the first author of our paper, which was published, is Shelley Forrest, who just took an easy 20-hour flight from Sydney to be here, <laughs> so, and she's visiting Toronto now, and also the Vienna colleagues, so thank you very much. you and this is the problem with this study that which you know now CT is a hot topic but like 20 years ago it was not hot topic especially not in Europe so when they started this longitudinal study the question did not include that uh, whether they played something in, in Europe you know it's maximum soccer that could be like something on boxing but I, I cannot answer this question but I guess there would have been a percentage yes that should have flagged up yes Yes, that's true. Thank you. So in our tech, you don't find any neurons with power? We do not find, <coughs> yes. But we have a follow-up study of this Philadelphia collection when we made a mathematical modeling of which anatomical region might precede the other anatomical region. And this modeling says that the supial artag begins either in the basal brain regions, like amygdala, basal forebrain, and then spreads or propagates to the dorsolateral surface. Or the other model, which is a less frequent of the, of the, in the population, is that it starts in the dorsolateral surface and goes to the basal. And the first model is exactly how the cerebrospinal fluid circulation goes, the pulsation. So if there is a traffic jam in the cerebrospinal fluid circulation, then there is the, an accumulation of, in the basal areas, like, and then but if you start with a mechanical injury, a local injury, then that fits to the second model. So that means that in the general population, the sequential development of astrocytic tau pathology indeed follows or shows the possibility that a subset of these individuals start here, which favors a local uh, injury or local mechanism.